two tweets. These are both from September. One I'm going to read just because I agree with it super strongly. And I also have observed you following this advice very well, which is all self-help boils down to choose long-term over short-term. I would modify the tweet to say, though, all truly effective self-help boils down to choose long-term over short-term. Uh, and uh, I mean, that is, I, the, I wanna... that is the entire challenge, uh, which is long-term thinking gets you long-term results. Uh, and I've said this a thousand different ways. In business, you want to play long-term games with long-term people. In your modern life and, and addictions and kind of just dealing with the avalanche of all the the abundance of things that are thrown at you that are really traps, like video games are a trap. They're, there's a shadow career that substitutes for your real career or, you know, smoking weed or drinking alcohol substitutes for like pleasure through uh, more simple things like sunlight and walks and porn substitutes for sex. And the list just goes on and on. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were saying walking sunlight and porn. I was like, no, no, we're no, talking. Right. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about the trifecta. But look at the, 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 so the, uh, the related tweet I had is the modern devil is cheap dopamine. And some interesting people on Twitter point out to me, actually, the ancient devil is cheap dopamine as well. And But in, yeah. in modern times, we've just hyper, hyper uh, accelerated it. You know, the modern mind is overstimulated. The modern body is understimulated. We've just taken all the creature comforts and we've maximized them to a thousand times. And so literally all the success in life boils down to a variation on the marshmallow test, where, you know, can the kid like hold off and eating the marshmallow for 15 minutes in exchange to get two marshmallows. And the claim is that turns out to be a big predictor for future success. Although like many psych experiments, I don't think it replicates well. Um, but anyway, so it, it just boils down to long-term versus short-term. And if you can just adopt long-term thinking in your mindset, you're just going to have a much easier life. Or as our favorite trainer, Jersey Gregorek says, hard choices, easy life, easy choices, hard life. That's it. Right. So just can you take the long term view in anything? Compound interest applies everywhere. It applies in relationships. It applies in money. It applies in health and fitness. Can you change your habits to read the kinds of books that you think will serve you best in the long term, the foundational books? Can you change your eating habits so that you're eating healthy food as opposed to unhealthy food? Can you create an exercise routine that you can do every day or every other day so that it's a consistent part of your life? And so I think a lot of it boils down to just choosing the long term or the short term and all the hacks, the good hacks basically help make the long term choice palatable or they help inspire you to kind of keep your eyes focused on the long term. So an example is if you're doing something that you love, if you're running a business that you enjoy, it is probably going to be more fun than playing a video game. If you if you come home at night from work and your first instinct is to play a video game, you're suffering at work. You're working just as hard in the video game, but the rewards are all fake because they're going to change the rules on you or some 13-year-old kid on the internet will destroy you because they just play that video game all day long. And I used to be a hardcore video gamer. I had a lot of fun doing it. And I did learn playing games for sure. But, you know, at this point, at this age, I pick up a video game. I'm doing it to get away from suffering. And I'm not really getting anything out of it. I could play the video game of investing. Or I could play the video game of starting companies. Or I could play the video game of, you know, go and play tennis and that would be good for my health. So it's good to find... Uh, so, so I think a lot of it is about finding the thing that you can do that is fun for you that looks like play that feels like play to you but looks like work to others that you can do that sustains you for the long term so for example in foods what you want to find is you want to find what is the health food out there that other people consider healthy and is nutritionally healthy profile but that i find tasty because if i can create those foods if i can become a good cook and create great foods that i enjoy eating and i like them and i can eat them regularly but they're actually super healthy that's amazing that's a hack now now i'm eating for the long term but i'm not giving up too much of the short term pleasure the same way being in a good relationship is you know is going to beat watching porn and having a good career or working an enjoyable job or hacking on some code that i enjoy is going to be far more productive than playing a video game. I don't want to sound preachy, but I will just say that as I, my love for reading came from another one of my tweets is read what you love until you love to read. So just fall in love with the idea of reading itself. So it's okay to read the junk food stuff, just fall in love with reading and eventually get bored of the simple stuff and you'll go to the more interesting stuff. And I love to read enough that I don't like watching TV. I don't watch movies. You know, people start talking about shows that they're watching on Netflix or what have you. And I give them this 
empty look. I don't watch shows on Netflix. They're not interesting. It's far more interesting to me to go for a walk and be meditative and I'll be in a very happy place or to read a book, which will be intellectually stimulating. And sure, once in a while, I'll watch a movie with friends or with, with my wife, but it's a social thing. You know, I'm doing it as a way of kind of sort of being on the same common ground as them. It's, I'm not, I, I would never watch a movie on my own unless maybe I was trapped in like a 15 hour airplane flight and I was really bored and I run out of everything else to do. And I just want to zone out. Even then, I don't think I watch a movie anymore. So I, I just feel like a lot of it is like finding the hacks, finding the things that make the long term feel effortless to you, and then you win. Okay, last last question. First, a recommendation: if you ever do decide to watch something, sorry, before we finish that topic, very important oh, yes. on people. Find the people that it doesn't take work to be around. The best relationships don't feel like work. You make the other person happy being yourself. They make you happy by being themselves. Everyone's honest. No one's putting on an act that they can't carry on for the next decade. Same thing with friendships. You know, the best friendships are friendships that were formed over nothing. It's not because you went to school. It's not because you studied on the same thing. It's not because you're working together. It's not because you enjoy rugby or, or uh, whatever. It's because your chemistry matches. Your temperament is similar. And so you can be friends with this person for 30 years years, 50 years. So the compound interest in relationships part ironically means that the best relationships, whether friendships or family or love are the ones where you don't have to work too hard at them. So you don't have to sustain that workload for the rest of your life and you can do it effortlessly. Yeah, totally. 